Hello everyone and welcome to what is another, albeit shorter, episode of reviewing your gaming rigs. This is where we take a look at some of your subscriber submitted gaming PCs. We take a look at the specs inside, talk about the case that you've decided to enclose all of your wonderful parts in and generally give you a brief overview of what I would suggest in terms of upgrades and, well, if it's bad enough, maybe it will get roasted as well. Seriously though, this video is a little bit shorter because I've realized it's July the 30th and tomorrow is July 31st, the deadline in which I must pay some more tax. So I thought we'd briefly keep the tax man waiting. <laughs> Never a good idea. <laughs> and then uh, I'd sort all that out later today. That's an important thing to remember as well. Taxes, always pay them always get them right, always double check them. But this isn't a financial advice channel, this is a PC focused channel and today, well, it's time to review some more of your rigs. So I thought we'd start with this excellent submission from SW underscore archives. I always wanna pronounce archives archives for some reason, but that's probably my mild dyslexia. So. Hey RG, I saw your recent RYGR video and remembered I made a submission back in June 2019. Oh my goodness, I apologise. See, sometimes I do get clogged up with submissions, but hopefully you've still got this PC. And if you haven't, well, be proud that you once owned it because this is a marvellous Alienware rig. So, this Alienware looks very, very good indeed. Um, they've actually left a video as well for this machine, which I'll leave a link to down in the description. It features an i5-4440 on a GAP85D3 motherboard, 12 gigs of DDR3 at 1333 megahertz, an MSI GTX 770, love those cards, a 240 gig SSD, one terabyte hard drive, 525 watt Dell 80 plus silver PSU, a Blu-ray drive, etc, etc. And the best part is, they say, it only cost 165 pounds. I absolutely love these old Alienware systems. I think the cases look very good. I'm just picturing, I mean, I can just imagine how heavy that is by looking at it. Those cases sure do have a lot of weight to them, but I think that sort of represents the quality of these older machines. They were very expensive, but they certainly felt very, you know, good quality, very sturdy. Uh, and back in the day, you could have expected to pay a rather large sum of money for one of these beasts. Now, if you do pick up one of these Alienwares and you want to swap the specs, um, like in this situation, then you just have to be careful that the new motherboard will fit inside the case um, due to some older Dell machines having various unique, let's say, form factors. But yeah, some cases should be absolutely fine. I mean, I've dealt with a couple of Alienwares that have been fine and it's always a great looking project in the end once you've finished upgrading an old Alienware. It really does look very good. Okay, next up we have a submission from at Venturian628. This was submitted on Twitter. This PC features an old school i3-3240 at 3.4 gigahertz, a GTX 550 Ti. Uh, absolutely love those 550 Ti's. It's a one gigabyte card. We have played around with those in the past and when that first came out, that was my dream GPU. This is actually a very nice pairing, a very nice entry level PC for playing some light games. Uh, this also has a 500 watt power supply and they did mention that they were going to upgrade to 10 gigabytes soon by adding an eight gigabyte stick. Um, but I've just seen the reply down here and it says they've now got two HyperX 4 gig 1600 megahertz sticks and an Asus P8H61M LE USB 3 motherboard. Yeah, I was gonna say that just slapping another random RAM stick in there probably wasn't the best idea. If you're going to upgrade the RAM, then try and get two sticks of equal stuff. You know, if you've got four gigs, um, you find another random four gigabyte stick on eBay that's not of the same brand, totally different timings, things like that. It really isn't the best idea. I would just suggest buying two brand new sticks if you can, if you can't find an exact match. Sometimes the price difference isn't too much either. So yeah, aside from that though, well, I really do like this rig. You know, an i3 in combination with a 550 Ti years ago would have been the system to build. 
And even so today, I'm sure it can hold up in some titles. CSGO and Dota comes to mind. I also just saw the reply about upgrading to a 750 Ti, and I think it would make a nice difference, but I wouldn't go much higher than that with the current CPU in the system. I think if you wanted to go higher than a 750 Ti, then perhaps consider what used i5 processors are on the market too. So risk underscore plays here has sent me their current rig. Uh, it sits within a techware question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, case. It cost them $20. The Gigabyte H61M $24 motherboard, uh, eight gigs of Samsung DDR3 plus four gigs of Kingston DDR3, an i7-3770, a GTX 1660, a Toshiba 500 gig hard drive, and a 250 Samsung, 250 gig Samsung Evo SSD. I really do like what's going on inside this case. I like that beefy CPU cooler. I think it looks really good. Um, yeah, that's all I can really say there. I think that's a nice combination. The i7 3770 still holds up fairly well. You know, it's amazing how those old i7s still do. Four cores and eight threads, so it's not going to give anyone any trouble at the moment. The GTX 1660 as well. A great graphics card for the money, I think. Um, yeah, and if you did want to upgrade anything there, I would say maybe the RAM to 16 gigs, get two equal 8 gig sticks in that system. The motherboard should have no trouble supporting it, of course. And I think that both the CPU and GPU are still going to be okay for the near future. Of course, I can't speak for the next couple of years when we see the release of next-gen consoles, how that will impact older PC hardware, but for now, that's a very nice setup in the i7 and 1660. will go great in combination. The great thing about those i7s is that they can be picked up for such little money now in comparison to what they used to cost. So, yeah, and they still offer great performance. Okay, so next up we have a very nice looking build, very nice indeed, from Kid Tendo 89 This rig features an i7-7700K, 16 gigs of DDR4, an RTX 2060 Super, Be Quiet Dark Rock 4 CPU cooler, a Corsair RM 750 watt PSU, a 240 gig Samsung SSD, a one terabyte, Rocket Q NVMe M.2 SSD and a two terabyte hard drive for storage. Suggestions? Well, there's nothing really to suggest there. That is a very nice build. I think it looks great, especially with that dual monitor setup there. You know, I can't really recommend the i7 7700K to people who want to build a PC now because, you know, you might as well just get something like the Ryzen 3 3100 or 3300X. They seem to be decent options that can compete with those older Intel chips. But yeah, on the used market, those i7s are still very good. If you can find one cheap enough, look out for them. And in pairing with an RTX 2060 Super, yeah, there's nothing really there to criticize. I mean, it looks good, looks clean. There's some great shots of the system there as well. And the Be Quiet beefy coolers are really very good. I always recommend Be Quiet stuff. I think it's fantastic, especially for the price some of the stuff costs. Okay, so this PC from at Gel Dallas, apologize every time for pronunciation, really caught my eye. It features a Ryzen 5 1600 AF at 4GHz, fantastic chips if you can find them, of course. A B450 Gaming Pro Carbon AC motherboard, 16 gigs of Trident Z3200 MHz RAM, an RX 570 8 gig, great cards, an Arctic Freezer 34 eSports NZXT H510 Alliance, and a Straight Power 11 Platinum 550 watt PSU. Again, those PSUs are really very good. I think Straight Power 11, they're Be Quiet, aren't they? Yeah, so, you know, Be Quiet stuff generally, in my opinion, always seems to be faultless every time I've used it. I really do enjoy their stuff. This isn't sponsored by Be Quiet or anything like that, but it could be if you're watching. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, that's a nice combination there. The uh, Ryzen 5 1600 is a chip that I feel is going to last for quite some time. And the fact that you can find them, if you can find them, for decent money as well, means that they are great options. The 570 is probably going to be the thing that you'll need to upgrade soonest, I would imagine anyway. But for now, they really are still decent cards for the price. And I always say, if anyone's looking for a new graphics card, they don't have too much to spend. RX 570 seems to be the sensible way to go. And inside, wow, what a clean build. You know, the red, 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 nice one eyes. The blue and white cables look really, really nice. I think, 
a lot of love and care has gone into that machine because it really shows in these pictures. Okay, so this is uh, one from Christo68584906. Um, I do that sometimes as well if the username's taken, just mash a load of random buttons and hope for the best. This is a PC in an Xbox One, which, you know, there's a whole album on Imgur. Is it Imgur? Imgur? I've never really been sure how to pronounce it, but honestly, this album is certainly worth looking through. I mean, look at this for a start. That is so cool. This has a Ryzen 5 1600 inside, an Asus GTX 1660 Phoenix, Gigabyte B450 Aorus Pro Wi-Fi board, 3000 megahertz Corsair Vengeance RAM. <laughs> like, yeah, 500 gig WD Blue M.2 SSD, a two terabyte Seagate SSHD. Do you know, I'm surprised at how all this stuff fit in that case, to be honest. An FSP Mini ITX slash Flex ATX 500 watt 80 plus gold power supply. So the components are really good. You know, top quality components in there. It's just a matter of making them fit. And it seems that you've done so really quite well. I mean, it's certainly an ambitious project. Overall, the CPU runs around 65 degrees under 100% synthetic load. I mean, that's impressive in itself in such a tiny case. And the GPU is a little toasty at 88 degrees at full 100% load. That's not toasty at all, to be honest. Um, especially considering the uh, enclosure. Not enough to throttle, but definitely enough where this will need to be a well-ventilated area. Well, yeah. When closed up, yeah, I can imagine the case gets nice and warm and would be a perfect spot for a cat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is really something. You might remember if you've been here on the channel... I wanted to do an Xbox build, an original Xbox build, a PC inside an Xbox. I started the project, but so much went wrong, I never picked it up because it was just like a disaster. I started cutting bits out and, you know, it, it totally went wrong, to be honest. And the same thing for this Mac project that I started. These are all things I plan on going back to, but I'll probably use this as an example if I ever try to build in an Xbox again. I think Tech by Matt did a really good... Um, PC in an Xbox build video and I think he did a GameCube one as well so they're worth checking out but this these ambitious DIY projects really are something else and uh, yeah I love seeing PCs built in things that PCs shouldn't be built in to be honest thank you for all of your submissions as usual again apologies for the shorter video but I have some business affairs to attend to that really need to be attended to today so thank you very much for watching and uh, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it down below. You can submit your PCs. I'll probably see them on Twitter, um, at RGNHD. Just DM me over there. They're more likely to be seen than on Instagram, which is also at RGNHD. Leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully, I'll see you all in the next one.